Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achana and welcome back to my C++ series. So today, building off of what we talked about last time with function pointers, if you haven't seen that video, definitely click up there to check it out. Today, we're gonna to be talking about, talking about lambdas and lambdas are essentially a way to a way for us to define something that I like to call an anonymous function. So basically, it's a way for us to create a function without actually having to physically create a function. Just like a quick disposable function if we want some, if we want to demonstrate some kind of code that needs to be run, but we we want to treat it more like a variable and less than an actual formal function that exists as like a symbol in our actual compiled code, if that makes sense. And obviously when we jump into some examples, if that didn't make sense, hopefully that'll clear it up. Okay, so first of all, a lambda, right? What is it used for? It's one thing to understand what it is, but it's obviously a completely different thing to understand how to use it and when to use it. And the answer to that is essentially, whenever you have a function pointer, you can use a lambda in C++. That is how that works, right? So a lambda is just a way for us to literally define a function without having to define a function. So the usage of a lambda, therefore, is wherever we would normally set a function pointer to a function, we can set it to a lambda instead, right? So really to talk about why lambdas are useful and where you can use them, you need to understand where you would use a function pointer. And we definitely did talk about that in the function pointers video, but when we actually start getting into concrete examples in C++ and in this series, and especially the game engine series where we actually build something, that's when you'll really see me use everything that I describe in this series. So just keep that in mind. This is more to be treated as like a reference and like, a, oh, I don't know what this is at all, or I don't know the syntax for this actual thing or how it works, right? So let's jump in and we're gonna build off of what we covered in the function pointers video to actually demonstrate the usage of a lambda and the different things that we can do with it. Okay, so this is the code that we had from the last video. We basically just built a little for each function, which took in a function pointer. And in fact, last video, I even said that we did use a lambda. This is a lambda right over here. We did essentially define our own function in line with the rest of our code that just printed out whatever value we needed. And this function pointer essentially defined what the lambda actually needed to be. So in other words, we know that it returns void and we know that it takes one parameter, which is an integer. And that's why you see this function, as you can see, returns nothing. It just prints out a line of text. And then we have this integer value parameter, which is defined because we've said that we need to take in an integer. And in this case, the integer that we pass into this function ends up being the value that we're currently iterating over right? So you can see that literally this func value is actually calling this code that we've defined here in our main function. And that really is the usage of a lambda. Let's us do cool things like this. One of the biggest examples I can ever give is we want to be able to pass in a function to an API so that at some point in the future, it can call that function for us because we don't know we, we can't call the function now because either it doesn't have the data it needs or we just don't want to. We want to kind of defer the calling of a function. And if we want to do something like that, then of course we need to tell it what function to call when it gets up to the stage of, I now want to call a function. And lambdas are just a really good way of specifying that function, specifying code that you want to run sometime in the future, like we have here with this for each, where we actually run that code when we're iterating over the element and when it becomes time for us to call it with a specific parameter as we're doing here. So let's dissect the syntax of this lambda a little bit. I'm actually going to kind of get rid of this and assign it to an auto variable. So auto lambda will say equals our lambda and then we'll pass in the lambda into here. All right, cool. So first of all, we start off a lambda with these square brackets. Let me make some room. We start off this lambda with the square brackets. What is that? Now I will point out first of all, that you don't really have to take my word for it or this video for it, because sometimes videos are a bit annoying for things like this. You can actually go over to cppreference.com as I've got open over here. And there is an, uh, there's, a, there's a page on Lambda expressions. And you can see they exist in C++11 and they've actually got the syntax of all the things you can do. And you can see that what it calls the first part is the captures. And of course it describes everything over here. If you go to the explanation, you can see the captures are a comma separated list of zero or more captures. cppreference.com is my favorite C++ reference website. There are many others and you can use all of them really. They're all useful, but this one's actually quite clear. Um, refer to this often 
right? I'll leave a link to the Lambda page in the description below, but in general, if you're not sure about something like Lambdas, oh, I wonder what goes into that capture thing or what the possible values are, right? If you, if you try to figure out stuff like that, just look it up in the reference. Okay, so inside here, you can see the captures. We have a comma separated list of zero or more captures. So I'll explain what this is in a minute, but basically you can see that we can pass in like variables essentially. A would be captured by a copy or a value and B is captured by reference here. We can pass in this, we can pass in just an ampersand which captures everything by reference, just an equal sign which captures everything by value or by copy and then that captures nothing. So what is this whole capturing thing? Well, consider this as an example. What if we want to put outside variables into the instructions that are inside our Lambda function. What happens then, right? Because remember, what we're doing is we're constructing a function that will then get called later. So if we use variables that are outside of that Lambda, like for example, outside of this function, so maybe I have an int a over here that's equal to five. What if I use that here? What if the part, well, instead of printing value or something, I want to print A? Well, how's that gonna work? Because this is outside. And obviously what I'm doing is calling this code from over here inside this for each loop. So how does it have access to A? Well, there's two ways that we can pass this A variable around. And this is the exact same as if we had made our own function. We can pass it by value or we can pass it by reference. And that is what that capture group is for, right? That first, that square brackets, that lets us say how we want to pass variables in. Now, in this case, we're not passing anything in, which is why we're getting an error here because, well, it's an enclosing function, we can't pass in A. But what we can do is we can either write equals, which means pass everything in by value, or we can write an ampersand like this, which means pass everything in by reference, or we can actually write individual variables like this. So I wanna pass A by value or with an ampersand A by reference. Now in this case, we actually get an error when we try and pass something in. Well, actually, if we capture anything, whether it be by value or by reference, we're gonna get an error over here in for each. And this is just in this specific example because we're just using a raw function pointer. If we convert this to an SCD function like we were right now, so this is gonna be, of course, returning void, taking in one int parameter and we'll call it func and I'll include functional so that we have access to that, then that's gonna go away, okay? So what we're doing here is we're passing everything in by value, which means it's just gonna copy the value and pass it in, but you can also use an ampersand if you wanna capture something by reference. So maybe if it's like a, a class or a struct that you don't wanna copy, or this Lambda is actually intended to modify the code, if you're not sure or to modify that object or variable, if you're not sure what I mean by passing by reference, check out both my video on functions, I think covers a little bit of that, but the references video and the pointers video is also related to that, all that stuff. If we go back to C++ reference, we, you, you can also see that we have the next step, which is the parameters, right? So those are the parameters that our function takes in. We have an optional specifier such as mutable, which allows the body to modify parameters captured by copy. That's another thing that's kind of useful. You can see here that we're copying the A variable, but if we try and assign A to something like that, it's not gonna let us, which is a bit weird because we're just passing it by value. And of course, if we were passing something into a normal function by value, of course we can, we can reassign it into whatever we want. And to fix that, you basically just add the word mutable here. It's a bit weird, but hey, stuff like that, you probably wouldn't even realize exists if you don't look at things like the reference and see what's possible, because you can see that over here, we have our kind of parameters and whatever, which is one of them is that, that mutable optional kind of sequence of specifiers. Const expression is another one as well. Anyway, that's essentially how lambdas work. It's pretty simple. I don't want to drag this video on because it, it makes sense, I hope, to most people. It is fairly simple. The usages of it are the most important part. We're gonna look at one use for why you might wanna use a Lambda in something called std find if, which is part of the algorithm header file, and it's basically something that we can use to find a value inside of some kind of iterator. So over here, we do have this vector of values. I'm, I've included algorithm over here at the top, and I'm gonna type in std find if. So this function is basically just going to accept some kind of iterator, so we'll give it values begin and values end. So between the beginning and end of this vector of values that we have here, we can basically say, hey, return for me an iterator that is the first element that matches whatever kind of predicate I pass in. So in other words, what we can do here is write a function it's going to take in, this is a vector of integers, so we'll take in int value. And then it has to return a boolean, which basically says whether or not it fulfills our conditions. So we'll say maybe value is greater than three, 
or something like that, let's just return that. So return value greater than three. So it's going to look through this vector for numbers, for integers that are larger than three and return to us an iterator of that, which will essentially be just the first element. So what it should do hopefully is return five for us. So if we assign this auto iterator equals std find f, um, and then we'll print out We'll dereference that iterator and print it out. We should get the value five printing. Why? Because we've specified that we want a value greater than three using a lambda, and five happens to be the first number that is greater than three inside this list of values that we have. So if I just kind of put a breakpoint somewhere here and run my code, you'll see that we get the value five printing as we expected. And we've managed to do that fairly easily by just specifying a nice little quick function that we want this co this code to call. So what this is going to do is loop through our list, kind of like what I've got here in for each. And it's as if we just added a little, if value greater than five, then return kind of that value. That's basically what this is doing for us. But we've, we've, we're able to specify this if statement condition, this boolean by just using a Lambda really quickly like that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit the like button. That's pretty much all there is to Lambdas. Thank you, huge thank you as always to all of my Patreon supporters. You can head on over to patreon.com forward slash the channel and help support all the videos that I make here on my channel. Next time, I don't even know what we're, gonna, what we're gonna cover next time to be honest. Probably, we haven't even covered standard function yet, but I feel like these function pointers are just gonna drag on for a while. And I think you guys all understand them. If you don't, definitely leave a comment below. But anyway, I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.